time to finish leading and following. Anybody remember from last week anything? Mm -hmm. Anything that you want to share about leading and following? I, we got to see if we're learning, because if we're not learning, then if we if we're not note taking or or uh, absorbing, then we need to rewind. The call of God should lead us all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody else? There's no wrong answers if we were taking notes. I have, uh, don't love the ministry more than the church. That's right. Don't love the ministry more than God. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't love, don't fall in love with the ministry. Fall in love with the God of the ministry. Yes. The, 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 the church will flirt. Oh. God's not a flirt. Mm -hmm. The church will flirt. Say I love you and cheat on you. Yes, sir. God doesn't cheat. Come on. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? We're not people pleasers. That's right. If we're gonna be in leadership, you can't please the people. You gotta please God. If you have uh, are pleasing God, you will have favor with man. Mm -hmm. Because on. God gives the favor and assigns a man to bless you. Amen? Amen. You might think that you, you uh, don't have the qualifications to, to maybe uh, start a new job or maybe uh, get a new place to live or anything, but if you please God, God will show you favor even to your enemies. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anything else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, let's move then. The crowds are ruled by wrong voices. Hmm. The crowds are ruled by wrong voices. Ever been in, in a crowd where you're trying to stay focused and you hear wrong voices that sound pretty comfortable to be able to, to uh, just kind of veer in with the crowd? Ever hear that? Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to Luke 8.34 then and we'll hear it. Luke 8.34. You guys okay tonight? Amen. Yes. Everybody repented? <laughs> mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. Every day. I haven't yet. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's critical to repent before you hear or minister because then you're not effective or affected. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again. It's critical to repent before you minister or before you get ministered to because you're not effective to minister or you're not effective affected to be ministered by God mm -hmm. because of the, the junk that we have when we drive uh, on the way to reach on Tuesday night in the car. Anybody know Come what on. I'm talking about? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you're not the only one, sister. You're not. Believe me. And, and being a, a, a true leader will get you here regardless. Even though you want to jump the wall and, and stay over there hiding at the bank. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Ever felt like that? Come on, Rich. I have. Come on. And if, uh, if you haven't felt like that, well, just stay with us a while. You'll feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Maybe sometimes you just want to sit out in the foyer and kind of just uh, let the smoke Claire. settle. Yes, sir. Even though you walk in smelling like smoke, God will not let you get burned. Amen? Amen. 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 And I'm talking about leaders. Yeah. <laughs> leaders. Uh, you know, Brother Juan, whenever we get to him, he's got some fires going in. And when we leave those fires, we go home smelling like smoke, but we're not burned. That's right. Amen. Amen. We're, we're, we're only burned by the sun. If we don't cover the sun, and I'm talking about the the solar, yeah. mm -hmm. not the Savior. The Savior will not burn us, amen? amen. But the Savior should be burning in us. Amen. It will burn that junk right out. I'm going a different direction here. 
Now we have New Testament examples of rising above the crowd mentality. You got we as leaders must rise above the crowd mentality. Amen. 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 Uh, the, in the heat of the crowd, we must rise above that mentality. The crowds are ruled by wrong voices. Amen. But as leaders, we don't follow the crowd. We are to lead the crowd. Amen. So Luke 8, 34 and 37. <clears throat> Let's start at verse 32. We there? Mm -hmm. There was a large herd of swine feeding on the mountain. They begged him to permit them to enter them, and he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the, the man and entered the swine. That's how powerful God can be in your life. That's how powerful the Holy Spirit can be in your life that the swine can literally leave you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the herd ran violently, violently down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and reported it in the city and in the country. You know how the chismosos are? <laughs> The gossipers, mm -hmm. well, what they were going to do, what they were, what they were, what were attempting to do, that was they were going to go spread good news. Mm -hmm. and maybe some of them might not have known that, but they were going to go and spread good news about what happened, what Jesus did when when he dealt with that the 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 man full of demons. Amen. You know anybody full of demons? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> All right. Where was I? Verse 35. Oh. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had de be departed sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind. See, when you've had an, an, an encounter with Jesus, Jesus will clothe you and you'll be in your right mind. Mm -hmm. Anybody in their right Amen. mind tonight? Amen. Only two of us. Okay. Anybody in their right mind? Come on. Yes. Remember when you were out of your mind? Yes, sir. And I don't mean stylistic, stylistic types thrown out of my <laughs> mind, but I'm talking about out of your mind, looking for things that weren't there. Oh, yeah. oh, come on. That's right. Let's be honest. Amen. Yes, sir. And they were afraid. These people were afraid because all, all of a sudden this man had been delivered. Amen. Say delivered. 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 Those who had seen it told them how he had been possessed by demons was healed. Then the whole crowd, listen to this, the whole crowd from the surrounding country of the of the Gadarene asked him to depart from them for they were seized with great fear. So he went into the boat and returned. Now the man asked, from whom the demons had departed asked him if he could stay with him. When was the last time you asked Jesus if you could stay with him when he'd done something for you? Mm -hmm. A miracle, a healing, a deliverance, a breakthrough. Amen? Amen. Because it, it's, it's serious to be able to do that. Amen? Verse 39, Return to your, your own house. Jesus sent him away saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. So he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. Amen. 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 So this, 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 uh, this demon-possessed man has been delivered. The crowd seen the pigs jump over the cliff. Ever seen pigs jump over the cliff? Maybe not animals, but... Yeah. <laughs> so the crowds they, what, what happens is the crowds take on a, a herd mentality mm -hmm. say herd not herd, herd like I heard but herd like the herds that go in mm -hmm. to the sanctuary when it's time to put the burritos away and time to start praying <laughs> worship mm. amen yeah. amen are we okay with it yeah. so the crowds take on the herd me mentality the sheep are blind followers Mm -hmm. Amen. The crowds are very fickle. They're, they 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 will change their mind uh, 
if they see something, uh, 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 they'll go along with it. But then if they hear somebody saying something, uh, they go along with that. And the, but that's what fickle means, is uh, they're undecided. They're not, they're not sure of what they want to follow. Amen. Amen. But us as leaders, say leaders. Leaders. Say I'm a leader. I'm a leader. Say I'm a leader. I'm a leader. Let's say it like you mean it. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. If you're going to be a leader, you have to be focused and know where you're going. Come on. Amen. Amen. Do you know where you're going? Do you know where you're going right now? Are you reading the compass? Oh, come on. Are you the word. hearing the guiding light? And I'm not talking about the soap opera. I'm talking about the light that will guide you in the right direction as a leader. Amen. As a leader, you're going to have to be able to go the right direction whether anybody wants to go with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some will start to follow you and as you get closer to where your destination is, is to be. Uh, you'll see that people will fall out. Mm -hmm. Fall out. Right. They won't want to cross the street. But they'll want to cross the street when they see that you have arrived, mm -hmm. even though we haven't arrived, but mm -hmm. you have arrived at a certain destination to celebrate, and then they'll come. Amen. That's right. We're okay? Yes. yes. So if we're going to be good leaders, we have to be focused. Say focused. Focus. focus. What does it mean to be focused? You know, first of all, being focused is you have, you have your mind on one vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Double vision will cause you to have a, a blurry, a collision. That's good. You should be up here. <laughs> <laughs> double vision will cause you to have a collision, but double vision will, will cause you, your, your God-given vision to become blurry. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like some of us that have glasses and we wear glasses, but we take off the glasses and, and we see blurry. Amen. Amen. God wants us to see clear. Amen. Amen. Are we okay? Yes. The crowds are easily persuaded. Let's go to Matthew 27, 20. The crowds are easily persuaded. Us as leaders should know that we, 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 if we're a good godly leader, we can actually persuade people to follow us. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? right? Follow us to the Newport Dunes or follow us to, to uh, uh, the, the room to pray in, uh, with the ushers. Follow us to uh, the door to, to help greet. Amen? Yeah. Because God has given us uh, as leaders uh, inf uh, influential power by His Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen? You've got to have some type of influence. That's right. Amen? Matthew 27, 20. Let me start reading it at this, verse 15. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to, to the people a prisoner whom they chose. Not a good thing. Let the people choose because I don't want the blood on my hands. Mm. Amen? Amen? Ever had uh, the uh, people choose for you and end up regretting mm -hmm. the people's yep. mm -hmm. choice yes. as a leader? Ever done that? Yes. You guys aren't going to answer, are you? <laughs> Verse 16 reads, They had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? Now you've got to understand that Pilate he, he's kind of like a shot caller. Right? Now all of a sudden he wants to hand the ball to somebody else in their court. You make the decision because I don't want no part of this. Ever done that as a leader? Mm -hmm. yeah. Godly leaders won't do that. Though. Pass the buck. Amen? Yeah, it's kind of like passing the buck. Amen? Mm -hmm. Are we okay with this? Come on. Yes. For he knew that they had handed him over out of envy. Verse 19. When he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent a word to him. Watch out when the wife talks. <laughs> his wife sent a word to him. You got to understand, Pilate's wife was going through some head trips during her, her nighttime vision while she was sleeping. 
It wasn't the pizza and it wasn't the grapes that were causing her to have these visions. God was sending a warning to Pilate through his wife. Wow. Sometimes we just got to listen to our wives. Sometimes. Amen? <laughs> okay, we'll get that out of our system right now. <laughs> have nothing to do with that righteous man. For I have suffered much today in a dream on account of him. She was suffering in her dream because of the dream that God had placed while she was sleeping about Jesus. Your wife will warn you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Not all wives are like Job's wife. Yeah. Remember Job's wife? Mm -hmm. Job was standing upright, a leader standing upright, and Job's wife said what? Still, still, still worshiping God? Why don't you curse God and die? Mm -hmm. Amen? I wonder if she had a relationship with God. Anyway, that's somewhere else. Verse 19. When he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much today in a dream on account of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas, and kill Jesus. So you got the these other leaders on the on the corner, uh, kind of saying, uh, "Jesus, uh, he probably had uh, cue cards up uh, with Jesus' name on it. Jesus, Jesus, we want Jesus. We don't want Barabbas. Can you picture that right now? Can you imagine that? Because it said that those leaders were were encouraging the the, the crowd. Say the crowd, the, the, crowd. the, the crowd to pick Jesus. Amen. Are we okay? Yes, sir. Yes. The governor answered, which of the two do you want me to release? They said Barabbas. Why? Because they were being uh, encouraged to say Barabbas. They wanted to see Jesus crucified. Amen. But it was a plan of God for Jesus to be crucified so that we could be here today as godly leaders pushing forward no matter what happens in our lives. Amen. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said to him, Let him be crucified. The governor said, Why? What evil has he done? Now all of a sudden we're changing minds. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. As a godly leader, we cannot change our mind. If, if God has said it, that settles it. Mm -hmm. Amen? If, if God has said it, and you know God said it, that settles it. Are we going to go with the crowd that with the people or are we going to go with God? Because God is a majority no matter if you've got five saints or 5,000 saints. Yes, sir. Amen? We're not going to be standing in front of the saints. Mm -hmm. We're going to be standing in front of God. Come on. Amen? Amen. Okay, well, well, verse 24, When Pilate saw that he could not prevail but rather that unrest was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this righteous man. See to it yourselves. He confessed, you know what? I don't want nothing to do with this. I don't, I don't want nothing to do. I started it, but I don't want nothing to do with this now. Amen. Then all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Do you realize that these, the, the crowd prophesied over themselves mm -hmm. that the blood of Christ would be on not only them, but their children and the generations to come. And that's something to get excited about because they didn't really know what they were saying. Right. Amen. Verse 26, Then he released Barabbas to them, but when he had scourged Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The crowds are easily persuaded. Ever been a, a, somebody to persuade when before you got born again? You could just talk somebody into buying something. You could talk somebody into taking you somewhere. You could talk somebody into to buying you something. You could talk somebody just about to do anything. Do mm -hmm. your dirty work for you. Right? Mm -hmm. Do do your chores. Do your do your, do your homework for you. Uh, do uh, do your work for you. Amen. So the crowds are easily persuaded, but we need to be persuaded of one thing. That is the call of God in our life. Be persuaded that God has called you already. 
And that should settle it in your spirit. Amen. Amen. Are you following me tonight? Yes, sir. In verse 21, the crowds make bad decisions. Crowds will make bad decisions because of desperation. Mm. The word. <clears throat> or comfort. Or convenience. Crowds will make bad decisions. That's why we need good godly leaders. Amen. To persuade them to stay on track. Amen? Amen. Fine example is that backpack outreach that we did. That could have got shut down, but with good godly leaders, we pursued and, and, and we overcame. That's right. And people were blessed. That's right. Amen. That's why we have to be careful when we're when we're, we're when we have crowds that when we're on a mission to do something that that we stay focused, stay on track. We could have easily said, "Just pack it up. We'll go back to the church." But we did not do that. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. The crowds crucify leaders. The crowds crucify leaders. And that's in Matthew 27, 22. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? The crowd said, Crucify him. Done nothing. Mm -hmm. Crucify him. They just wanted to see a crucifixion. Amen? But not only did they see a crucifixion, but they experienced a crucifixion of a leader. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? That would lead us to the cross to everlasting life. The crowds will never take risk. They will never take risk. Remember Peter? In the boat? In the storm? And Jesus was walking on the water? And what did Peter do? He told, if that's you, Jesus, tell me to come. Right? Yes, sir. Is that what your Bible says? Yes. Mm -hmm. But the church, the small group, was sitting out in the back of the pew, in the back of the boat. And Peter was looking, and he looks at the disciples. He looked at the, the, the Wednesday night reach at somewhere else. Some other church, he looked at the small cell group. He, he looked at the little fellowship that was going on. And, and, and they're going, Peter, what are you doing? Juan, what are you doing? Juan is taking great steps of faith to do ministry. Mm -hmm. Juan, what are you doing? It, it, it's too much work. It's too much to do. It costs too much. It costs too much to, to do this. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, stay in the boat. We're comfortable. We, we're in these four walls. And, and, and God's good to us. And, and we're okay. We'll, we'll make it once the storm passed. Amen? But what did Peter do? Anybody know? How about you? You know out there? What did Peter do? He stepped out. He stepped out in faith. Because Jesus was there. And he knew if, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he would be able to walk. As long as you keep your eyes on Jesus, you will be able to walk into your business. As long as you keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll be able to walk into that, that, uh, that car dealer and buy yourself a new car. As long as you, you, you keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll get your healing in your body. You'll get your, the new knees or whatever it might be. Uh, as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus, you, you, you continue forward and, and God will help you. But what happened to Peter then? Peter took his eyes off of God. But Jesus didn't take his eyes off of Peter. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's some good news right there. G Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, but Jesus did not take his eyes off of him. So he watched him the whole time. Asia, God, God is watching you the whole time. Amen. Come caught. Jesus is watching you the whole time. You might take your eyes off of, off of God, but he, he won't take his eyes off of you. Yes, he says that you, you are the apple of his eye. You are, your name is written on the palm of his hand. Come on. And he will always continue to keep, even if we walk away just for a split second or, what do they say, a minute? A New York minute? He'll still keep an eye on us. Amen? So Peter, he, he began to fall because he, he got his eyes off of God. But the good thing is, is he got out of the boat. 
Amen. And the disciples are watching him. The rich group is watching you. The small group is watching us. The church is watching us when we step out. Now I'm not saying go do something foolish and just step out. Get, get some good godly counseling. Amen. Go to your leaders that will that, be able to pray for you and, 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 and speak into your life and, and let you know if you're ready or if you should wait. Amen? Amen. We're okay with it. Yes, sir. The crowds will never take risk. We're not part of the crowd. We lead. Amen? Amen. Right. Peter walked on water, but the disciples never did. The disciples got into the boat, but the crowd stayed on the shore. The crowds will sit there and watch from the shore while you're stepping out of the boat. Mm -hmm. Is this making sense? Yes, sir. The crowds will sit there while you're stepping out of the boat with your, your business, uh, 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 with your new house, uh, uh, with your ministry, whatever it might be. The crowds will watch you from afar. That's well, true. As you step out. Amen. Amen. The crowds make excellent disciples, though, because you always find a few in the in the crowd to that want to be uh, godly leaders. Amen? Amen. Be a godly leader. Look at your neighbor and say, "Be a godly leader." Be a godly leader. Give the crowd something to follow. Give the crowd something godly to follow. Give the crowd something that 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 that'll make them hungry to to want to serve God. Give the crowd some. Something that, 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 that they'll want to be able to lead people to God. Amen? Amen? Live a life that is filled with godly examples. Remember, it is not our job to give in to people's comfort zones. There's a lot of people in the church, and I don't, I'm not talking just about destiny, but in the body of Christ that, 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 that they're sitting in the pews and, and they're getting fat, but they're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the Word of God can go through someone's body and not... Uh, uh, allow uh, uh, someone to become activated in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Lord. Well, you might might feel well. Well, I'm not qualified. God does doesn't look for qualified. He looks for available people. That's right. Amen. He will use anybody that wants to be used. Yeah. That that demonic man that we read about, God used him to go tell people in the city and in the country what God has done to him. Father, I bind and I rebuke that distraction now in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now. It is not our job to give into people's comfort zones. Leadership disturbs the comfortable, but comforts the disturbed. Hmm. I'll say that again. Leadership disturbs the comfortable. You know those that are comfortable? You ever been comfortable at home? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden somebody comes in to lead you to discomfort? Mm -hmm. To get off the couch? Get, up, get away from that 70 inch? <laughs> <laughs> TV. Amen. <laughs> it is not our job to give in to people's comfort zone. <laughs> Leadership disturbs the comfortable but comforts the disturbed. That's what leadership is about in the kingdom of God. To com comfort those that are disturbed. To comfort those that are restless. To comfort those who are weary. To, to comfort those who are oppressed, uh, uh, f uh, feeling anxiety. To comfort those. Amen? Mm -hmm. Be a leader that will develop other leaders. Amen. Be a leader that will develop other leaders. Good work. Let's go to Numbers 14. <coughs> Numbers chapter 14. Oh man, I'm doing good. Let's start at uh, Numbers 13, 26. You got to understand when when God said to go take the land, anybody remember that in Numbers? Mm -hmm. There's always a couple. Numbers chapter 13, verse 26. You, you always have 
a couple of good leaders that see beyond the crowd's sight. Amen. As good godly leaders, you have to see beyond the crowd's sight. Women that lead in the in the shopping arena, yeah. they see beyond the crowd's sight. They can see what others can't see. What what do I mean by that? You can see the sale. You can see the bargain. And you can see the abundance. And you can even see the need for whatever you're buying. Okay, let's move on then. <laughs> Here's a spies report in verse 26. And they returned and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the assembly of the children of Israel to the wilderness of Haran to Kadesh and brought back word to them and to the entire assembly and they showed them the fruit of the land. Now remember, God is telling them to take this land. Amen? So there's already fruit, there's already production going on in the land. Say production. production. There's already a good asset there. There's a, a, a availability, there, there's resources, there's and everything that you would need to live a good life. Amen? How many want to live a good life? Amen. When God tells you to take it, take it. Mm -hmm. Take it. Amen? Verse 27, They reported to him and said, We came to the land where you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Or my translation is, We came to the, the land where you sent us, and it surely flows with work. Labor. Mm -hmm. Work. And this is the fruit of it. However, the people are strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are fortified and very great. And also we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of Negev, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the edge of the Jordan. Verse 30 says, Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. Now, I believe Caleb might have said, shut up! Because you're talking too much and your negativity is going to shut down some people that are ready to move in. Come on. Go work. Amen? Amen? Say, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Tell them to shut up when, they're, they're tell, when you're about ready to buy the house. Tell them to shut up when, when, you, when you're about ready to, to, to uh, get a promotion. Tell them to shut up when, when you're about ready to get your certification. Tell them to shut up. Tell them to shut up. Amen? Amen. We okay. Caleb silenced. I, I really believe this is like a gentle translation. Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. Why did Caleb say that? Because God said it. Mm -hmm. I said God said it. Amen. Did God tell you something? Sure did. Then quit listening to the crowd. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now verse 11 reads, But the men that went up with him said, We are not able to go up, up against the people because they are stronger than we. Shut up! Hmm. You got men that are going to say we are not able. We can't. We can't do this. We don't have the vehicle. We don't. We don't. We don't have the manpower. We don't. We don't. We don't have the finances. We. Uh, we don't have any building material. Are, are you understanding what? Yes. Mm -hmm. What we're sharing tonight. Yes. You're always going to have somebody that's going to tell you we don't have money. Yeah. yeah. We don't have this. Yeah. We don't have enough time. Yeah. We work. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. Amen. Yes. But you got to remember that you got to hear God, and as a leader, you got to keep pursuing. Amen. Amen. Yes. If you're a godly leader, you have to continue to pursue. <clears throat> oh, verse thirty-two. They gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, "The land through through which we have gone." As spies it is a land that devours its inhabitants. Now they're making up stories. Mm -hmm. They're going to eat us up alive. Ever heard anybody? They're going to eat me alive. Ever said that? 
They're going to eat me alive. I don't know how I'm going to do this. You're going to do it through the power of God. Come on. Right. You're going to do, do it with the, the, the gift of godly leadership that you have in you. Amen. 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 You're not always going to have the church there at your job. Right. You're not always going to have the church there at, at, at the county registrar to get your license. You're not always going to have the church and the pastor there wherever you're going when you move forward. That's right. Amen. But you have godly leadership that's inside you that will move you forward. Amen. 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 The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. The devil will always magnify your enemy. Yes, Come on. But as long as you stand behind God. That's right. As long as you stand behind God. Those enemies that look like Goliath are nothing but little little ants compared to being behind the Almighty God. Amen? Amen. And there we saw, ever had bills stacked up? Come on. Credit, credit collectors knocking on your door? But as long as you stand behind God and you stay obedient and you do what God said, those bills will dissipate. Amen. Now, not overnight, he, not that he can't, but he probably wants to teach us a lesson because we got a little bit squanderous. Oh. We, uh, we, got, we enjoyed a little bit too much of the fruit of the land yep. while we were working for the milk and honey. Amen? Amen. But God will do it. Amen? Say God will do it. God, God will do it. it. Amen. So where was that now? 33. 33. 33. Thank you. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak. Now, now we already saw one giant. Now we're going to see the another giant. See how they keep yeah. continue. The crowd keeps saying, "Well, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Uh, what about this?" Ever hear of anybody? Maybe you've been uh, one that said that. Well, uh, this is over here, and this is over here. We'll always make excuses why we can't move in to what God has promised us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, and there we saw the giant, the son of Anak, which come from the, the giants, and in our eyes we were like grasshoppers. Now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden we're spiritual midgets. Hmm. And so we were in their eyes. Now all of a sudden we're, we're like grasshoppers church hopping. Hmm. Come on. Because that's what grasshoppers do, they hop right. from location to location trying to trying to get a confirmation that we shouldn't get into the promised land that God has promised us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen? I'm not saying us, but I'm talking about the United States. The U.S. Now here, chapter 14. If you haven't been reading your Bible, well, we're reading tonight, so you can tell people tomorrow that I read my Bible. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so here we go in chapter 14. Israel refuses to enter Canaan. Can you imagine that? You got Newport dunes and Israel doesn't want to go kick back over there. <laughs> Amen? Okay, we'll start at verse 1. And the whole assembly lifted up their voices and cried. And the people wept that night. Any, any, anybody know anybody that cries? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And weep, weep all night, sniveling. All the children of Israel grumbled against Moses and against Aaron and the whole assembly said to them, Oh, that we had died in the land of Egypt. Really? Do we really want to die in Egypt? You think God wouldn't have allowed us to die already before we came to His will? Or that we had died in the wilderness? And why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should become prey. And all of a sudden they're accusing God of, of getting ready to, to do a hit on him. <laughs> to take him out. It is not better for us. Is it not better for us to return to Egypt? Do you think it's really better to go back to Egypt? I'm talking to you out there too. Do you think it's better in Egypt? Do we really think it's better than Egypt? I'd rather go through hell with God then go through hell without him. Because I've been Amen. through hell Come on. without God. And all it did was become 
more hellish than anything. Yeah. Amen. Plus, I would add stuff to that. <laughs> Amen. But when you're going through hell with God, you're just going to go through. Yeah. If you're catching hell with God, all you're going to do is let it go. Right. Amen. So go through hell with God. Skip Egypt and stay in the kingdom that, business. Come on, my Amen. Brother. No matter how bad it gets, sometimes you might want to quit. Mm -hmm. You might want to give up. You can't give up because it's a fixed fight already. Just like Mayweather. <laughs> it was fixed. It was fixed. Amen. You just picture God fighting against somebody that's really not that experienced against God. Even though he shows ex his experience against us. But if we rely, we trust, and we depend on God, we've got the number one prize fighter on our side. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? Verse 5? No. This is where I want to go. Is it not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said to one another, one to another, they said. It wasn't he said. Mm -hmm. It wasn't she said. They said. Because... People will not be accountable for taking charge into leading you the wrong way. Okay, never mind. Mm -hmm. let, us, let us select a leader and let us return to Egypt. Well, let me ask you something. If you're ready to walk away from God, why can't you be the leader yourself and lead yourself out? Come on. Why do you have to pick somebody so that you can point the finger at why you ended up back at the dope house? Mm -hmm. Why you ended up back at the bar? Why you ended, ended, ended back up in Egypt? Amen? If you're going to look for a leader, then lead yourself back to sin. And when you're tired of it, lead yourself back to the cross. Come on. Amen? Come on. We, 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 we want to pick leaders to have us do a drive-by hmm. when we can't get in the car ourselves. Come on. Good word. Amen. Let me keep going before I, they shut me off. <laughs> Verse 5 says, Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the congregation of the assembly of the children of Israel, Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, from the ones who explored the land, tore their clothes. They were upset because God had already said. They were frustrated. As a godly leader, you will become frustrated. Man. Come on. True. But you gotta press in. That's right. As a godly leader, we can't have a, a roast lamb after church on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Amen. We don't want to shoot the sheep. Amen. But we want to cry out to God to give us strength to lead Amen. the sheep. Amen. Hallelujah. Is this okay? Yes. yes sir. And they spoke, verse 7, and they spoke to the all, all the assembly of the children of Israel saying, the land which we pass through to explore, it is a very, very good land. Whatever God's bringing to you is very, very good. Amen. Mm -hmm. In Genesis, God said it was very, very good when he created mankind. Amen. When he was done, right before he rested on the seventh day, he said very, very good, twice as good twice as good. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So wherever God's taking you is twice as good as where you're at now. Where, uh, wherever God is taking you is twice as good as where you had in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Wherever God is taking you is twice as good as where you think you might be able to take yourself. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So, verse 8, if the Lord delights in us, you got to highlight that. If the Lord delights in us, do you think the Lord delights in, in backing off? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Do you think the Lord delights in us when we decide to go uh, our, our own way rather than His way? Do you think the Lord delights in us when, 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 we, when we decide to change direction rather than going straight into what God has called us to? Do you think, even though it may be a little uncomfortable to stay on the narrow path, the broad way is destruction. Mm. Amen. So if the Lord delights in us, then He will bring us into this land. How many want to go into the land? Come on. How, how many want God to bring you into the land? How many want God to bring you into a bigger place to live? How many want God to bring, 
bring you into a, a, a better income so that you can further the kingdom of God. How many, how, many, how many want God to bring you into your healing, into your miracle, into your deliverance, into your restoration, and, 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 into your, 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 your destiny? If the Lord delights in us, as we delight, we follow Him, we, we, we listen to godly leaders, and we Amen. walk by faith. We walk by faith into that destiny. Amen? Amen. If the Lord delights in us, then He will bring us into the land and give it to us. So if He brings us, He's going to give it to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah. A land which flows with milk and honey, there's that work again. You're got going to have to work. You're going to have to work to pay the mortgage. You're going to have to work to pay the car note. You're going to have to work to pay the iPhone 8. You're gonna have to work. You're gonna you're gonna have to work to pay the insurance on on your new car after you get the license. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to work. Amen. Yes. Verse nine. Only do not re rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, because they are bread for us. You're gonna have all your enemies for lunch. Come on. Yeah. Come on. You're gonna have all your enemies for lunch. Not only that, you're going to invite your enemies for lunch to sit in your new place. Come on. You're going to invite, invite your enemies yes. to sit in your new car while you take them to yes. lunch and buy them lunch. Thank you, Lord. Amen. As you delight in the Lord, He will give us. Amen. 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 So only do not rebel against the Lord nor fear the people of the land because they are bread for us. Their defense is gone from them and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them but all the assembly said stone them with stones and the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of the meeting before all the children children of Israel can you imagine that the, 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 the children of God wanted to stone the leaders because the, the leaders were determined they had their mind made up they were called they were selected they were they were chosen to do what God has called to lead the people into the promised land. Yes, sir. To lead the people in, 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 into the blessing of God. To lead the people into prosperity. Amen. But they wanted to stone them. But check this out. The glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting before all the children of Israel. The Lord said to Moses, How long will this people disgrace me? And how long will they not believe me? Do you read your word? Do you believe what God says? Yes. yes. Do, do you really believe? Yes. Do you really believe that He, that what He says is true? That He He will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. That 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 you are one of His favorites. That that you are His child. That that He is your Father. Do you really believe what He says? Yes. Do you believe? Yes, sir. Because He evidently He gets upset because it, His children do not really believe when they read his word amen and I know some have been struggling with with certain situations finances uh, places to live uh, uh, maybe uh, the certification didn't come as soon as uh, you know that somebody said but if you hear God God will bring it to pass mm -hmm. amen. we can't give Julian, uh, the set of keys to the car because he's only 14 and he hasn't been trained to drive yet. Well, God's the same way. He's not going to give us something that we're not ready yet for. Because when he gives it to us, he wants us to maintain it. He wants us to steward it. He wants us to, to, to glorify him and he wants us to be responsible. What, what, is, what a shame it would be if, if he put us into a house that we couldn't afford the mortgage. Mm. And then all of a sudden we go into foreclosure and we, and we were bragging that God did this, but then we can't afford the payment and people begin to say, what about your God? Yeah, good word. For his name's sake, he watches out for us. Amen. For his name's sake, he has godly leaders to lead. For his name's sake, godly leaders will tell you sometimes what you don't want to hear just to protect you. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. If, if, if my house was on fire, I would really hope that somebody would say, hey, your house is on fire. Mm -hmm. So I can get out. 
Amen. That's the kind of father that he is in heaven. He watches, he watches over us. He doesn't give us something too soon, too late. He gives it to us right on time when he knows Amen. that we're ready. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Did we get ministered to tonight? Yes, sir. Maybe you feel like maybe you feel like quitting. Maybe you feel like like giving up. As you, as 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 being a godly leader, I I, I believe I believe I shared last week that welcome to the towel ministry. Mm -hmm. Take that towel and wipe your tears. Take that towel and blow your nose good and hard. Let get all get all that junk out of your nose so you can breathe again. Take a great big deep breath and let the Spirit of God, the breath of God, the power of God move you and, and, and revive you, refresh you, and rejuvenate you so that you can continue to lead. Amen. You, you might say, well, I'm not a leader in the church. If you're in children's ministry and you're watching kids, you're a leader. That's right. Well, I'm not a leader. If you, if you have a family at home, you're a leader. That's right. Even if you're a single parent, if you're a single mother, you're a leader. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. You might might say, "Well, I don't, I don't really uh, do much." Uh, you you got to lead yourself to, to to get where God has for you. Yeah. Or maybe you think that maybe uh, that God's angry with you that that because you've been feeling this way. He's not angry with you. He just wants you to get back on track again. Mm -hmm. He sees your weariness. He sees your discouragement but he also sees what he has for you because he has it for you Amen. so repeat after me dear God, dear God I thank you that you're leading me I thank you that you're leading me that you're strengthening me that you're strengthening me that you lead me to green pastures that you lead me to green pastures and lay me to rest and lay me to rest I'm ready to, to restart I'm ready to restart. I'm ready to begin again. I'm ready to begin again. I shall not quit. I shall not quit. I shall not quit. I shall not quit. No matter how many giants. No matter how many giants. No matter no no matter how many enemies. No matter how many enemies. No matter how many naysayers. No matter how many naysayers. I will continue forward. I will continue forward. I have the power. I have the power. I have the Spirit of God in me. I have the Spirit of God in me. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I thank you for a fresh fire. I thank you for a fresh fire. I thank you for anointing me. I thank you for anointing me. That my assignment has been called by you. And my assignment has been called by you. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. As you do the rest. As you do the rest. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God a great big clap on Glory to God. Amen.